Would you pray with me? God of grace, we give you thanks for these ancient stories, for the wisdom that is embedded within them. Bless the telling and the acting of this epiphany story that it might shape our lives this day as we consider how your light shines in the world and in our lives. Amen. So how many of you have seen Les Mis, the movie? Yeah? Okay, so my partner and I, Erica, are huge Les Mis fans. We've seen it on stage like 10 or 12 times. And I must confess to you, I've seen it three times since Christmas Day. (laughs) Three times. And I make no commitment to not seeing it a fourth. (laughs) And so anyways, I think on the second, second time we saw it, we were sitting at the end of the movie, you know, watching the credits, and this is a huge production, and so the credits take like 20 minutes. I mean, all these names flying up the screen. And we were sitting there in the movie theater after the movie, and the credits are still going, and we're talking about, oh, our favorite scene, and how this was, you know, Anne Hathaway did this amazing solo on this piece here, and we were also discussing how Russell Crowe should not ever do a music <laughs> film ever again, <laughs> like ever <clears throat> and so anyway, so we're talking about the favorite parts of our movie, and then all of a sudden, poof, the lights in the movie theater come on. Like bright, annoyingly blinding light, right? You've experienced that? Yeah, in the movie theater. And I figured, oh, it's time to go. <laughs> There's our cue. There's something about when you're sitting in darkness, When the lights come on, they seem to be brighter. I mean, we know physics tells us they're not brighter, but they seem brighter. They seem more jarring, more powerful. That's how light works sometimes, I think. That in the midst of the darkness, when the light shines, it shines even brighter, shines even more powerfully. Arise and Shine, your light has come, says the prophet Isaiah, to the dispirited and the hopeless Israelites. Your light has come, your hope in the midst of despair has arised. So rise and shine. Get out of the movie theater and go. We'll get to that in a minute. So today is Epiphany. It's that day when we celebrate and we even act out this this perplexing, amazing story about how the Magi followed the star, they followed the light to the Christ child. The the meaning of Greek, the word epiphany, it's a Greek word, means a showing forth or a manifestation, an appearance. And what we say theologically is the appearance of God incarnated in in this powerless little child. And yet, the light that shines in that child is powerful beyond all measure, so powerful that it will and has transformed the world. Now, in, in church discourse, in our theological language, we often use this metaphor or this um, image of light, light being the glory of God to explain the effect of the coming of this Christ child. We even sang it, follow the light, beautiful light, Jesus is light of the world. And, but what happens sometimes is that we, we fall into this um, kind of oppositional discourse that says that the light is always good and the darkness is always bad. Lightness is good, darkness is bad. We have this in our vernacular, right? White, white is snow, pure white, right? And dark, especially black, is bad. We have a black market, blacklisted. There are real effects of this oppositional discourse, often with racist implications in our contemporary life, right? So I want us to be careful about how we use these metaphors of light and darkness. And today, I'm going to invite us to do that in a particular way. That is that as we celebrate the coming of the light into the world, 
How is it that the light, the divine light that shines, needs the darkness as much as the darkness needs the light? Have you, have you ever gone stargazing before? Anyone? So how many of you went to downtown Denver to stargaze? Anybody? <laughs> so not the best place to see stars, right? Why? Well, the, all those street lights, all the lights of the city make it very difficult for us to see the stars. However, if you go up to the top of Sugarloaf Mountain, will you see more stars? Of course. We need the darkness in order to see the light. Let me say that again. We need the darkness in order to see the light. And here in in the Northern Hemisphere, when our days are short and it seems to get dark at, what, 2.30, 3 o'clock in the afternoon? This is a powerful metaphor about living in the darkness and, and, the, and the divine light coming and shining in our lives. Darkness is also a powerful metaphor for those who are living with illnesses or experiencing the loss of a loved one or when depression and despair seem to overwhelm you that you, don't even, you can't see any light at all. And in those moments, we yearn for the divine light. We yearn for the warmth and grace that it brings to bask in the glow of the divine light's message of hope in the midst of our despair. This season of Epiphany, we tell and act out the story of the Magi who follow the light. Now, who were these Magi? Who were these wise ones? Well, they were certainly scientists or scholars in astronomy, but more importantly, they were diviners. They were holy persons who came to interpret the movement of stars and dreams. And what did they do? They set out on their journey to seek the light of God, and they got up, they got up and they left. They got out of the theater and they left. So when they see this light, they receive it. It means something to them. And they arose, they followed the light shining in the east, and it, they followed it to the, to the Christ ch- child. Now, a bit preposterous, really, wandering about following this star in the sky. Has anyone ever done that? following this strange star. What a perplexing narrative. And yet, in some ways, I think it does suggest something about the spiritual journey, about risk-taking, going to places that are familiar, greeting the divine in the most unlikely of places. We too, as we embark on our spiritual journeys, we are ever mindful that the divine light will take us to places that um, are unfamiliar uncomfortable, and yet surprisingly powerful because there too the divine light shines. On Christmas Eve, we read the Gospel of John that says the light shines in the darkness and the darkness did not overcome it. The darkness did not overcome it. Now, have you ever lit a candle in the dark room? It doesn't take much to light a room. Even the littlest of light is not overcome by the darkness. But without the darkness, we wouldn't notice the candle at all. So, how might we respond, just like the Magi, in receiving the light? Arise, shine, for your light has come. How do we make sense of this? How do we perceive the divine light in our own lives so that we might go on our journey and to shine that light into the world with others? Now, having worshipped at the manger, the Magi carried the light of Christ out into the world with them. And so, too, we are called to rise from our worship at the manger and to move steadily out into the world, bearing the Christ light to those in need. 
where are the places in your own life that have been healed? Where are the places where you've experienced grace? Where have you experienced a sense of gratitude for a transformation in your life? It's those places that the light has shined in our lives. Tap into those places, and then we carry that light to others who are living in their places of darkness and despair. There's an ancient, ancient theologian from the 5th century named Pseudo Dionysius who talks about how light is the source of everything in the universe. Now, we know that the, the light of the sun has the energy that powers so much of our earth. Pseudo Dionysius has said, light is the power that embraces the universe. He says, it's the cause of the universe and its end. You get that? Alpha and Omega. This energy, this light is, is, it is, it is everything. And it illumines whatever is capable of receiving its light. And yet, get this, and yet the light never loses the fullness of its light. The light never loses the fullness of its light, especially when it's passed on to others. The point here is that the Magi received the light, they journeyed, and what did they do? They gave. So too, we receive the light, we journey out into the world, and we give the light to others. They brought important gifts, as we heard in our narrative this morning. Gold, frankincense, and myrrh. These are all very helpful to take care of a baby infant. Gold, incense, and myrrh. And one of my favorite jokes, I'm going to say it, this is probably why the Magi were men and not women. Because wise women would have brought baby wipes or warm food or certificates for free babysitting or something more helpful to Mary. Of course, these gifts have theological significance, right? So gold, a gift of worth and beauty, frankincense, incense to burn, holy incense to burn at the temple, and myrrh to prepare bodies for burial. So here we see the Magi respond to receiving the light by giving, by giving of themselves. So too are we called to give of ourselves. Because the divine light just wasn't in the baby Jesus, in the Christ child. The light has come, but the light continues to come within us. That spark of the divine is within us, and it now dwells within us to share with others, especially for whom others who are so overwhelmed with despair and darkness that they have no sense that any light is shining in their life at all. It is to those places that we are called to share our light. As the Apostle Paul reminds us, once you were in darkness, but now in Christ, you are, you are the light. So live as children of light. Some of us, some of us have lost that light. Some of us have lost the connection to that divine light within us. Some of us have survived horrible and awful experiences in life from abuse to violence to great loss and pain. Some of us feel alone or scared or we've lost a job or a home. The light is still shining and allowing others to bring their light to us rekindles our light so that we, we can proclaim our sacred worth as part of the divine light as well. Do you remember? Do you remember a Christmas Eve right here in this sanctuary? We had the Christ candle lit. And Heather and Marty and I took our small little tiny candles and we lit our candles from that candle. And it was dark. And we shared our light with each other and then we shared it down the rows 
And what happened? Did the light diminish because we were sharing it? No. In fact, when we shared the light, the whole room lit up. It glowed. The divine light glows stronger when we share it with others. When we remind others of their sacred worth, that grace abounds and that God loves us unconditionally. Friends, are you shining your light? Are you shining the light of grace or love or hope or compassion or justice? Whatever your gifts are, are you shining them out in the world? Because the world needs you. The world needs your gifts. The world needs your light. So let your light shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Amen.